All right, guys, welcome back to the table. 1776 or bust. And these two little lovely ladies, the CP10S optic ready model versus the P, well, P, listen to me, the M&P 2.0 subcompact. So I figured this is going to probably be the last hurrah of videos for me on the 2.0, maybe for a little while, but definitely for the future at, at this point. So there have been a lot of questions in regards to which one is better, the P10S or the 2.0 sub. So to kind of just put it out there, there's no way that I can tell you that because every person's different, every person's requirements as to what they think are better is going to be completely different to mine. Both are, in my opinion, formidable comp competition to other subcompact models that are out there on the market. Again, this is not to compare these to anything that's a single stack or you know a, a, a sort of single stack. So there's been a lot of comments about, well, why would you go with this instead of a 365 or this or that or the Hellcat or whatever it might be. But again, these are not the same type of guns. We have two double stacks. That's what we're looking at. These are subcompacts or considered subcompacts. So that's what we're going to be looking at tonight. Now, of course, off the bat, I've shot 350 rounds through this. And it just recently, and I have to say it, it handled very well. As a matter of fact, in shooting both, I was looking at the recoil and which one felt better versus what. So we'll talk about that in a moment, but I kind of want to go over through each one of these and talk about the pros and the cons of both, um, you know, really individually, and then let you guys decide on your own if which one would you favor and why. So let's start with the P10S. And obviously this is a, a crowd favorite. There's a lot of people out there that really like this gun. There's a lot of people who, who would say that this is the best P10 model that they've had or that they've come out with based on the size. Now, in regards to the subcompact size of the gun, you can see that I get a full ride on my pinky, even with the base plate when it's flat. So it definitely is not in the realm of a Glock 26. So that's why the comparison between this and a 26, I think is a little unfair because this gun is, is bigger. It's a bigger gun than a 26. And it really boils down to almost, uh, I guess you could say an equal size to the M&P. So to me, this is actually more of a fair uh, comparison between the two. But overall, the P10S, if you have any familiarity with this model, which many of you do, is just a really fine gun overall. I mean, the fit and finish of the gun is really nice. The overall craftsmanship of CZ handguns has really, really just gotten better over time. And you see that in this model. Now, the bonus of this gun, the positive of this gun, is that it does have the optic capability. Now, they are available without that. However, I did pick this one up, and uh, I was glad I did because I wasn't sure if I wanted to carry an optic or not. But just to have that simple option to do one and, and to actually add it without any extra costs or anything like that, I think is very beneficial to the shooter. I think as many options as we have, it really benefits us as a consumer because it allows us to make that decision on our own instead of eventually going to get it milled, which again, there's pros and cons to that as well. Uh, trigger wise, I'd say that the stock trigger out of the box is probably one of the best out there on the market. I don't think anybody can argue that. Uh, these are fantastic triggers out of the box. You'll notice I put the HB Industries trigger on there, which is in a nice bright red. The only reason why I did that, guys, was because I just like the shape of the trigger shoe better um, as opposed to the ones that came standard with it. There's nothing else changed. There's no springs in here, nothing. It is just the trigger shoe. Overall, the quality of the magazines are great. It's a 12-round capacity. And uh, again, they are able to exit out quickly and enter quickly as well. You'll notice here that you don't you don't have it ambi out of the box, but you can switch it over to this side here. So if you are a left-handed shooter, you can activate it that way as well. The slide release, slide lock, again, um, it's manageable. It's easy to do. Left, lefties, not for me so much, but um, you know, definitely for the right one it is. But overall, the gun is a fantastic gun. I don't think most people would complain about owning one of these if you can find them, that is. Now, how does it shoot? Well, Interestingly enough, it shoots well. What a surprise. And it's a flat shooting handgun. Uh, there's not uh, a tremendous amount of recoil, although I will say that in regards to the comparison between these two, I definitely noticed more recoil in this as opposed to the 2.0. But again, we'll talk about why that is in a minute. Size-wise, size-wise, this is an easy, easy concealable handgun. I have had no problems carrying this inside or even outside the waistband with my Masaro holster right here. This, this gun is a super easy gun to conceal. There is no issues with that as well. One of the things that I also did with this gun in particular was I wound up getting myself one of these UTG plus zeros just to give myself a little bit more room for my pinky. Um, and as you can see, it almost gives me a full-size grip 
but again, it's still kind of in that subcompact realm so that even though I get a little bit more pinky on there, it is still not going to make this gun so long that it would even compare it to, let's say, the P10C. The P10C's grip comes down to about here, so that makes it automatically bigger. Nonetheless, it still works, it's still effective, and it still, in my opinion, gives it a little bit more gun uh, for you to put your hands on. Serrations are easy to manipulate. Uh, it came with some night sight, so you have that front dot right there, which is a night sight, it is tritium, and then a blacked out rear. So, I mean, overall, the package is pretty solid. I'd say one of the things I did not like about this gun off the bat was the fact that you had no plates. It doesn't come with any plates. And to me, that's stupid. You know, you, you're paying a decent price for a gun. You think you'd come with some options. Maybe not every plate made in the world, but just a couple to kind of start it off. So, of course, you'd have to go aftermarket for these. You can buy them, I think, on CZ at this point, CZ Customs. But um, I thought that was kind of a downer in regards to the optic line for CZ, just as a generality. Ergonomics, I think the ergonomics are phenomenal. What a surprise. I mean, CZ, I think, uh, really does a great job with all their ergon ergonomics on their handguns. Makes it easy to, to really, really enjoy having one of these guns. This gun, comparatively speaking to the Smith & Wesson, actually sits a little bit further uh, on top of your hand, which I do like, thanks to that undercut, which again is a very classic CZ type of thing, especially with the, P, the P10s. Um, they all have that, which makes this sit very nicely in the hand. Other than that, guys, it shoots very nice. It's, it points very naturally. One of the things that uh, I have to say that I didn't enjoy about it shooting it the last time was every time I was shooting it, I kept getting this almost like somebody was electrocuting my finger, which I don't know what that was about. I noticed it that it was not only just on the flat base plate, but also on the plus zero. Um, so even with that extra room, every time the gun went boom, um, this uh, like a searing pain went through my pinky. And I've never had that before. Um, and I've never had that on any other gun. So I don't, I don't know what that was about, but it was definitely uncomfortable enough to make me not want to shoot it for a very long period of time, which I, I'm not happy with at this point. But other than that, that's my own personal opinion about this gun. Lots more pos positives than there are negatives. And again, the negatives are, you know, are they game changing? Not really. So take it with a grain of salt. Uh, the grip texturing is very good. Um, I would say that it is not as aggressive as the P10Cs and potentially the P10Fs. But overall, it does give you a good, a good grip on this gun, and this gun is not going to move. You, of course, have some landmarks to put your thumbs on, your support hand, and, of course, your index finger for indexing. So, I mean, overall, again, like I said, it just makes a lot of sense how they designed this, fit, this handgun, and it is very good. Now, of course, when we take a look at the, the 2.0 subcompact, the first thing that most people are going to want to know is the size. What is the size difference between this gun and the P10? Or, or I should say the P10 and the M&P 2.0 sub. So what I'm going to do is I'll put the P10 down on, on, the, on the actual table first, and I'm going to lay this right over it as best I can, okay? And hopefully you guys will be able to see. So I'm running the slides just about the same height. Um, there we go. So we have them on top of each other just about the same height. And uh, if you can make that out, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Now that's the best I got. You can see that there's just a little bit of space in between the two. So to me, that's a very negligible difference. I mean, this is not going to make or break the concealability of a P10S versus the subcompact. Although, interestingly enough, this is a 12-round magazine, and so is this one. The big difference that you're going to see here is that this mag base plate is thicker than the one on the 2.0. So again, not sure why they did that. Maybe they could cut that down a little bit and make it smaller because honestly, it would then it would actually line up almost perfectly with the 2.0. Again, uh, what I'll do is I'll show you what it looks like with the, uh, the pinky extension. So let me put these side by side and see if you can see that. So the pinky extension is going to come down further in the front, but you'll notice that this back portion, because it angles up, you lose some of this portion in regards to your P10S. Again, does this make this less um, concealable? I don't think so. As a matter of fact, I concealed it tonight and it was great. It was perfect. It was actually perfect wearing this gun. So again, not a huge difference, not a huge gain or loss. Uh, let's see, what is this one here? This is my plus zero for my CZ. So I'll put that in and then I'll show you what they look like with both of them in. So there's the plus zero from UTG. And here is the plus zero for the M&P 2.0 sub. So again, the slides are around the same height right now. And you're gonna notice there's, again, not a significant difference. It's just a difference in the angle of the grip. So this comes down a little bit more right here, whereas this angles back a little bit. And I mean, overall, at the same time, guys, 
I have to say, this is a negligible difference in size. So depending on what you're looking for, if you want a good small gun, you can definitely get away with both of these. There's no doubt in my mind that this is as easy to carry as this one. When we look at the, uh, the slide width next to each other, again, I don't have calipers. I'm not going to measure these. I might put something up that shows you the difference. Uh, I haven't really added the video yet, so that might be in there. But you, what you're going to see is that it definitely looks like the M&P is a little bit thicker. And just holding both of the handguns, I'm going to tell you it is. You can definitely feel it. Um, the polymer used is a little bit more squared off, whereas this is more rounded. Uh, the grip has a little bit more, I guess you could say, meat to it than the P10. The P10 definitely feels thinner in the hand. And one of the things that I said before is that because it has such a nice undercut, you can see that the slide of the P10 is sitting just slightly back further than the M&P. So whether that's good or bad, it's up to you to decide. You'll notice that the slide height, if I can do this right, the slide height is just about the same. So you're both going to, you know, both of these guns are going to sit nice and low in your hand. You can see that uh, when I turn the guns to the side, you can see that there's not a lot of polymer exposed on either gun. So that allows you to get a very nice, I guess you could say, flat shooting handgun. Again, if I put both slides face to face like that, you're going to see here that they are, I mean, it, I have not, I've never seen a comparison like this where two guns are so close to each other in regards to every feature. And that's what you're seeing right here. Obviously, the trigger guard's a little bit more rounded here where this is squared off. And I'm going to tell you that this trigger on here is much better than this hinge trigger. But that, again, that's my personal opinion. Texturing on the, uh, the M&P, in my opinion, is also more um, conducive to shooting for a long period of time. I absolutely love this texturing on all the 2.0s. Yeah, it's a bit rough, but uh, over time, they do run down a little bit um, just with use. I remember when I had this one here, this thing was, was very, very tacky. But I carry this a lot, and it's lost a little bit of that. You also have the ability, if you choose to, and do this at your own risk, to use some sandpaper and then kind of sand it down just slightly for a little bit more comfort. I mean, overall, both guns look really nice. The serrations on the M&P are workable. Um, there's really nothing that, I, in my opinion, you can complain about in regards to that. Maybe no front serrations that are usable, but at the same time, I don't really think that's a big deal. Uh, the fit and finish on both is excellent. There is absolutely nothing here to complain about, about the finish on the handguns. You'll notice that the tops do look slightly different. Uh, again, you have more of like a beveled uh, top slide in regards to the P10, whereas this one, even though it's beveled, it is rounded off. But they both have a really nice look to them, you know, kind of like a scalp slide here. So it looks really good. Both guns are, are just nice looking handguns if you're really into looking at your handguns that way. But ultimately... The one biggest advantage I think the P10 has is going to be the trigger. So again, there's no springs in this. It's just a change of the shoe. But what you're going to see here is there's your take up on the P10S trigger. Super short, nice and clean. And then you hit a nice definable war wall with a good break. The reset, again, nice and short right there. Pretty positive, very tactile, very audible, and a nice break again. The M&P trigger, well, you know, it's an M&P. Look how that thing hooks, man. It's just, ugh, blech. But anyway, <laughs> you, you pull that trigger back, and the one thing you're going to notice is that there's a lot more take up on that trigger. Some people like it, some people don't. Again, it's up to you to decide which one you prefer, but there definitely is a significant difference in travel. And that pre-travel takes up all the way to the back. You then hit a definable wall like the CZ, and then it's a nice clean break. The reset it's it's still in my opinion not a super good reset it is somewhat tactile somewhat audible but it doesn't just have that real clean um you know push and i'm not saying you need it it just i just wish it was a little bit better but one of the things that i don't like about the trigger of course is just the shape of it and this hinge i never seem to be able to get my index finger correct on this trigger and that's the reason why i don't like them it isn't because i can't shoot them it is just that I don't like them because I don't like the way my finger pad fits into that into that trigger. It's just the way it is. Feature-wise, in regards to the 2.0, which you've seen in the other video, I mean, everything works really nicely. Magazine ejection is very positive, so I don't think you have anything to worry about in regards to that. It comes right out. And, I mean, overall, you have two really good com competitors here. You know, I think some people are going to obviously prefer the CZ because it says CZ on it. And then there's going to be people out there who just love the M&P series. I am one of those people. I am an all-in person when it comes to the M uh, Smith & Wesson M&Ps. I think they did a really nice job with these guns. I mean, obviously, you have the advantage of the trigger plus the optic-ready model. Um, however, you can buy these without the optics, but it's up to you. I, I just wish... 
maybe Smith would have considered doing that as an option, even if you don't want to carry a gun with an optic. I think it's always good just to have the option in case. Now, overall, which would I choose? Well, it's kind of interesting. I really, really like the P10S. I, I think it's a really good fitting gun. Ergonomics are great. The trigger's fantastic. Fit and finish is wonderful. And again, it's a CZ, and I love CZ handguns. But then I look at the M&P and I say, man, it, it is a typical M&P 2.0. It has everything you want. It works really well. It shoots nice and flat thanks to the steel chassis, which again, I think is what mitigated some of that recoil compared to this. But at the same time, it, it just does everything right. And, you know, competitively speaking, price-wise, even though, you know, you probably find these around the 500 plus mark, you're still able to find these in the 400s. And so I think for me, if I was going out and I was looking for a subcompact, and I didn't really care what brand it was, if it was Smith or CZ, I would think really carefully what's the most important thing for you. For me, the ergonomics are good, the trigger's okay, fit and finish is really good, and as well as the track record. In regards to the P10, the trigger is excellent, ergonomics are very good, fit and finish is very good, and reliability thus far has been pretty good. For me though, I honestly think for me, the M&P works a little bit better. I like the system. I like the mag compatibility that you do get with this as well, depending on what year the model is. But I think overall, I'm going to stick with this 2.0. I, I do love it. I think it carries really nicely. And I love the fact that, you know, I can use any magazine that I want with it um, and still run with it. Overall, not a bad choice either way you decide to go. But for me, it's going to be this one. And it's just based on my preferences. And you don't have to agree. It's just what I'm thinking. So I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Put those comments down below. Tell me, CZ or M&P, tell me which one means better for you. And what I mean by that is one of these has better meaning because it works better for your system and how you carry a gun and how you shoot. So hope you guys have a great night. Stay safe. And as always, everyone, freedom is never free.